Howdy. This is the uh, the film Strategic Air Command. A lot of people consider this to be the gospel of the B-36. It's a really good movie, but it's got a lot of problems, and I've waited a long time to show this to people. Um, mostly for people who would use this as a historical reference or modelers. I'm going to point out a few uh, errors and continuation defects or whatever you call. The first thing is this is a B36H model. You can tell by the serial number. The insides are from a B36D. The reason this is significant is because the H model featured the new flight deck which is vastly different than the, um, the early one found in models A through F. The biggest difference is the dual flight engineers versus the single. Let's see what we can see here. Start jets. One, two, three, and four. Start the jets. Here's a big problem right here. If you've ever actually been in a B-36, you'll know that immediately behind this APG-32 system, there's a bulkhead. It's a pressure bulkhead. There's a hatch right here. So this is clearly the, um, the set that Paramount built on their property, I guess in California, at the studio. Um, this is reinforced by what it says in the books that the SAC and I believe Curtis LeMay um, gave Paramount essentially an intact B-36. I believe it is one of the ones that was heavily damaged from the tornado, but that could be inaccurate. Um, there's a few inaccuracies right here. This computer is obviously made out of wood. If you note that, that this is a pre-featherweight, meaning it has the crew comfort amenities, um, this is a stove. These are food um, keeping closets or whatever you call them. Same thing here. You'll notice in the scene when Jimmy Stewart walks through here that he sits down here. This is accurate, but when they sit down, he sits right immediately behind this bulkhead, which you can't do because in the real aircraft, this equipment is right up against the bulkhead. One of the huge inaccuracies that I feel feel that they did for just the ease of filming because they had the big cameras is you'll notice that Jimmy Stewart is sitting directly behind the pilot or a co-pilot in the um, in the Air Force they call it the aircraft commander and the pilot um, in the beginning of the flight sequence when they're walking towards the airplane Rocky says to Jimmy that you can ride behind the ace the aircraft commander and see how it's done. Well, in the actual B-36, that jump seat is behind the aircraft commander, but in this movie, it's behind the pilot, which is completely inaccurate. I like how they've got the guns covered up. There's a continuation error. They've closed the windows and hatches, yet that one's still open. I love how he throws the checklist and it seemingly falls out of the airplane. Um, in the real aircraft, there's maybe a two or three inch gap 
right there where it would fall and it would fall in there and you'd see it. But he takes that eight by 11 sheet of um, checklist and he just throws it off the edge of the planet. Big air. These seats are auxiliary seats. These are not the long distance E7s. I don't know the actual nomenclature. I think it's E7. But these are not the correct seats. These seats are very uncomfortable and you would not enjoy sitting in these in a long distance flight. I think it's interesting that they've got parts of the what was at that time top secret classified APG32 system, but they couldn't swing the proper seats. Once again, Jimmy Stewart is sitting on the wrong side. Skip forward here a little bit. I just noticed this recently. They're doing about, you know, 300 miles an hour, yet this uh, escape hatch is wide open. Nobody seems to notice. This is Colonel Dutch Holland. Captain Miller. Captain Phillips. Sergeant Jones. I'm mighty glad. Boy, you're getting out of rough duty. And Holland Tunnel to the gunner's compartment. I love this scene. The, um, the, the communications tube between the forward and aft compartments in the B-36 was 80 feet long. That's a tractor trailer plus 10 feet. Um, I've never personally gone through the tube before, but I can imagine that it would take, you know, a couple of minutes at the very least, just for one guy. But you'll notice that he goes through, and a few seconds later, he hollers, hollers for Jimmy to follow him. And another problem is there's only one cart. The cart had to traverse the entire 80 feet. And then there's a handle on the communications tube that you turn. And there's a wire that runs the entire tube. And when you turn that 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 um that knob, it returns the the um the cart to the front of the aircraft. So that would take at least five or ten minutes. How he magic magically, you know, immediately follows him with a single cart, you know, he if he scooted on his back, you know, he's a good man, but in the next scene it shows him on the cart. All right, Colonel. Okay. And of course that tunnel is a lot longer in real life. Um it it's not perfectly straight. It actually dips below the um the main spar, the wing. And it's very dark. You can see that that winding thing and the wires are missing. That's quite a trip. Yeah, it's about 80 feet. I never have gotten used to that thing. Wow, all right. Airman Lay. And then here's that what I was talking about earlier, how they, they moved that piece of equipment that's sitting right here so they could film him sitting right beside that bulkhead. So there you have it, he's sitting where there is a big piece of equipment in the real aircraft, which you saw previously. Um, here's my next favorite thing. He is conveniently standing up against where the Y3 periscopic bomb site would be. It's probably highly classified, therefore it's not there. 
It's a shame they couldn't mock, have not mocked it up. Um, huge problems. This area right here, there, the equipment is hung by tie rods, which these are mounted directly to the base of the flight deck. I, I don't know why nobody noticed that, but that's a huge, huge one there. Another massive problem is if you'll notice that there's no aircraft here. It's just nothingness. They they did not they didn't do their homework very well on this uh, area of the airplane. Because right there, that would be the it's it's comical. You've got these tie rods holding up the Loran, which is mounts directly to um, this. Continues like that. You got the map case right, in case you're ever wondering what that is. Just, it's a shame in, in some areas they did so well, but the, the, the obvious ones are just TV thrown together. There's more stuff, but I don't want to bore you any longer. I'll see you next time.